here's the deal. The bottom line on nuclear weapons is that when the president gives the order, it must be followed. There's about four minutes between the order being given and the people responsible for launching nuclear weapons to do so. Shall we play a game? Game of death. Now this is being reported on several news sources, so it's not a secret. But it doesn't take a genius to figure out what's going on. Extreme US military deployment is being reported in Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean. Shall we play a game? It looks like the US is getting ready for a major war. The US base at Diego Garcia is so loaded with planes, they're parking them on roads. And according to information from a government contractor, the US has deployed more planes than I have ever seen in nine years. To the military base at Diego Garcia and the Indian Ocean specifically, this contractor wrote to say, I rode through Diego Garcia every six weeks to pull maintenance on uplink equipment as a private contractor. Something big is going on. The island has more aircraft than any time I've ever seen. In the last nine years, they have blocked off some access to roads and are now parking aircraft on the national road barriers. Temporary barracks and hangars are popping up everywhere. I have never seen B1s and B2s. Now there are very many. Security is nuts. I've had to show my DVC times today. My co worker is a former Air Force. I said, they're like that when nukes around. The airfield had a takeoff or landing every one minute. Very busy. When we flew out, we waited in line for quite a while. We never had to wait in the past. Navy had the docks full of ships and 68 more on move just offshore. We watched many pallets of bombs being loaded off in one ship. There were a bunch of B-52s coming in that were painted flat black. I haven't seen that before. Russia is deploying its largest naval force since the Cold War for Syria. The Russian aircraft carrier the Kusinev was now sailing past Norway on its way to Syria where it is expected to arrive in just under two weeks. As part of the carrier naval group, Russia also deployed an escort of seven other Russian ships is in fact deploying the largest naval force since the end of the Cold War to reinforce its Syria campaign. Senior NATO diplomat says Russia is deploying all of its northern fleet and part of its Baltic fleet to reinforce Syria's campaign. Deployments will increase the number of Russian fire bombers in Syria. Moscow may launch final air assault on Aleppo in two weeks, NATO diplomat. With the first escalation between Russia and US converted the sea of the Syrian coastline into a parking lot of warships. In two weeks, it's about to get much busier. The composition of the Russian flotilla, according to a report by the Norwegian military, which released pictures taken by surveillance aircraft, we now know that the Kusinev, accompanied by a fleet of Russian warships, is currently on its way to Syria and sailing in international waters off the coast of Norway near Trottenheim. As reported by Reuters, a spokesman for the Norwegian military intelligence service said the country's armed forces frequently release such footage. The eight ships involved will probably play a role in the deciding battle for Aleppo. According to Russian TASS state news agency, the aircraft carrier would carry 15 Su-33s and MiG-29K jet fighters and over 10K, 52K, KA-27s and over 31 something helicopters. This carrier can carry more than 50 aircraft and its weapon systems include granite and anti-ship cruise missiles. Next in the flotilla in terms of firepower is the Russian nuclear powered battle cruiser Peter the Great. The Kiryov class cruiser Peter the Great escorts the carrier. A Norwegian Lockheed P 3 Orion reconnaissance plane, monitoring the force, photographed the ships. The MiG 29 Falcom jets and combat helicopters were visible on the carrier's deck. The other Russian surface ships in the group are two large anti submarine warships. 
the Sesmoresks and the Vice Admiral Kukulov and four support vessels. Now, if you think about what's going on, we just had a bombing from Navy at radar stations in Yemen. Now, that'd be the perfect flyover because they don't really have permission to fly anywhere else if they want to hit Syria. So they're coming from this direction. And it looks like they're going to fly over Yemen since they knocked out their air radar. Saudi Arabia will, of course, give them permission to fly their planes over Saudi Arabia. So what happens here? Are they going to fly over Iraq? We just had an announcement that they're going to send a battalion back into Iraq. That's a possibility that they can fly back over to Syria. Russia deploys feared EMP weapons, orders troops to stagger defense positions. Days of darkness, Russia attacks with electromagnetic pulse. When one of America's top political news sources, The Nation, began to write headlines, warning why is Washington still pushing for war with Russia? And a propaganda confused American public began saying that they are not ready to go to war with Russia. A super EMP weapon, however detonated 300 kilometers above the center of the U.S., could destroy the entire nation's industrial and military capacity and kill a large percentage of the American public by taking down the U.S. electrical grid. Once destroyed, the grid's elements would take decades to rebuild. Even if the U.S. were to protect its electrical infrastructure from such a threat, legislation to protect the grid is now in Congress. The parallel vulnerability of the U.S. military forces to an EMP attack would be just as serious. We know the Department of Defense has testified to Congress 99% of the electricity for continental U.S. military bases comes from the civilian grid. Our military bases would therefore be without electrical power for decades as well. Unfortunately, the thousands of electrical transformers destroyed by an EMP attack were not primarily built in America. Even if they were, they require at least a five-year lead time for production. And guess who makes most of our power grid coming out of China? So why don't we have American companies that are reinforcing our grid? Overseas power projection from U.S. military bases would be effectively impossible without an operational grid. Moreover, after such an EMP attack, the national focus would be on saving millions of Americans from mass starvation and preserving existence. Not on going over there to fight a war or to defend U.S. interests. Many people believe this is what the prophecies of the Bible refer to and will be invaded, and this will be part of it. So let's just say that this is a possibility and not total BS, and that we are closer to being destroyed than people think. Would we fight against an EMP that is prophecy that is bound to happen? Our military must not have anything to defend against this. So what if this does happen before 2017? Can we prepare for this type of invasion? I think the military, by taking precautions considering much of our military weaponry, depends on electronics. The madness of potential nuclear confrontation if launched. Mounting evidence should give everyone pause for concern. Secret war with Russia escalates. Pay attention. Putin, don't push me. The Ministry of Defense has reported today that President Putin has authorized an immediate wartime deployment of the Federation's most feared and secretive weapon. That includes its axle fricurator driven pulsed electron beam accelerator able to instantly defeat all aerial threats and high power microwave HPM E-bombs, cruise missiles and artillery shells that use enormous electromagnetic radio pulse to disable computers, electronics, vehicles, guided missiles and communications while leaving people and structures unharmed. This report further states that President Putin has ordered the Federation's nearly 2 million active duty military forces and federal security personnel to begin dispersing to their staggered defensive positions in order to protect these vital defenders from an anticipated nuclear first strike scenario feared to be launched against Russia by Obama's regime and its allies. Most astounding to read in this MLD report is that not only has President Putin ordered the deployment of these much feared weapons, he has further authorized that one of them, a super high frequency cannon, Washington is installing so-called anti-missile systems, bases, and radars in European territory. America under George Bush withdrew from the ABM treaty. 
its limited anti-ballistic missile arsenals. Putin called it the cornerstone of the entire international security system. Everything we do is just a response to threats emerging against us, Putin explained. Besides, what we do is limited in scope and scale, but it is however sufficient to ensure Russia's security. Moscow Russian Strategic Nuclear Forces Chief says its new weapons will be capable of neutralizing any potential missile defenses. That the nation's military planners have taken into account the emerging potential of the NATO-US-led missile defense. The Kremlin's long has described the US missile shield as its top threat to Russia, dismissing Washington's claims as tended to fend off an Iranian missile threat. Karakriev said that while the existing U.S. missile defense is incapable of deflecting a missile attack, Russia is capable of launching, the American missile shield will become more advanced in the future. He added that Russia already has taken steps that would guarantee neutralizing any prospective missile shield. be clear to those who try to oppose the United States. I want to be clear to those who wish to do us harm. I want to be clear to those around the world who want to destroy our way of life and that of our allies and friends. The United States military, despite all our challenges, despite our op-tempo, despite everything we've been doing, will stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. Other countries, Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea went to school on us. They closely watched how we fought in 91 and 03. They studied our doctrine, our tactics, our equipment, our organization, our training, and our leadership. And in turn, they revised their own doctrines, and they are rapidly modernizing the militaries today to avoid our strengths in hopes of defeating us at some point in the future. Recently, a senior Russian official, ambassador to the United Kingdom, Alexander Kadamenko, he said, quote, the established world order is undergoing a foundational shakeup with the Crimea, Ukraine, and Brexit. He went on to call for the dismantling of NATO and the European Union. And he said, quote, Russia can now fight a conventional war in Europe and win. Russia is the only country that will remain relevant forever. Any other country is dispensable, and that includes the United States. We are endgame now, end quote. We can now, and we will remain in the future, retain the capability to rapidly de deploy, and, and we will destroy any enemy, anywhere, anytime. Additionally, the battlefield will be highly complex, almost certainly, in dense urban areas and against an elusive, ambiguous enemy that combines terrorism and guerrilla warfare alongside conventional capabilities mixed with large civilian populations.